Hey guys, it's Sarah. So today I'm going to be bringing you some reviews on a bunch of SPF products that I've been testing out recently. Basically everything but face SPF because I have another like face sunscreen review and comparison video coming in the next few weeks where I'll be reviewing I think five different face sunscreens, comparing them, letting you know which ones are the best for which skin type, things like that. So that's coming later. Today I'm going to be reviewing a bunch of body SPF products. I have an SPF hand cream, an SPF eye cream, some SPF lip balms, a scalp SPF, just lots of SPF reviews to share with you. So I've been trying a lot of really interesting SPF products recently. Let me start with some Supergoop products. So I recently did place an order on Supergoop's website. There were a few products of theirs that I wanted to try out, including their hand screen, their poof part powder with SPF 45, and their Bright Eyed Mineral SPF 40 Eye Cream. I also bought their Glow Screen, which will be in my face sunscreen video, but I was really just intrigued by all three of these. Um, let me start with the part powder. So, backstory. I don't know about you, but my scalp burns so easily. Like, I remember, especially when I was younger, getting a sunburn on my part and on my scalp so often to the point where now I am kind of concerned. Like I think that I need to keep an eye on my scalp as I get older and just check on it periodically to make sure that I don't get skin cancer on my scalp because I've had a lot of scalp sunburns, especially like I remember back in, um, in high school when I had band camp every summer. I didn't wear a hat. I think I maybe tried to put some sunscreen on my part sometimes, but I did not do a good job and it's just bad. So I don't know if anybody else can relate, but I have, you know, pretty fine light colored hair. And so I don't think my hair protects my scalp nearly as much as you might think. I mean, I think that's one of the areas that gets neglected a lot. Even if you don't necessarily get burnt on your scalp like I do, it's still exposed to the sun and it's one of the places that's getting like direct sunlight when you're outside. Uh, so something to be aware of. And I think the best thing to do is to wear a hat when you're gonna be spending a lot of time outside, but I really wanted to try this because I'd never seen any kind of product like this before. So this has SPF 45, the active ingredient is just zinc oxide, and it says that the powdery formula actually absorbs excess oils, leaving your locks looking better than ever. So I do actually like this. I think that this is definitely wearable. It comes out as a pretty light colored powder and it's in this pump bottle. So I'm gonna apply some now and kind of demonstrate. I figured out that the best way to do it is to definitely hold it like two or three inches above your scalp. If you're holding it too close, you're gonna end up with like a pile of powder all in one spot. So here's how I do it. And it comes out pretty white. But you kind of just get it on there, make sure you have an even line. I know it looks crazy right now. But I'm just gonna take my fingers and lightly kind of rub it in. Now, if you have really dark hair, this is probably gonna be similar to like a light powdery dry shampoo in your hair. So just be aware of that. It may not work for everyone, but I find it pretty easy to get a very precise application just on the part. Now, I honestly feel like it's necessary also to lift up these other sections of my hair because I don't think that my hair actually protects the rest of my scalp either, like not just my part, but when I'm gonna be going outside, I even take up these layers and kind of put it in there. And I basically treat it like dry shampoo. Like I'll coat my scalp and then kind of like work it in with my fingers. And honestly, it performs a lot like dry shampoo or like a texturizing product like that. Like it really does lift up my roots, which I kind of appreciate as someone with fine hair, I can always use more volume. So I remember a long time ago, I used to actually try to put regular sunscreen on my part and of course that's going to make me your hair super greasy because you're literally putting sunscreen in your hair but this 
works really well. Now, I feel like you could also use, like I have a Derma E face powder SPF that has a little brush top. You could probably take off the brush and maybe just sprinkle some of that in your part. And that has a little bit more of like a medium skin tone color. I don't know if it comes in multiple shades. It would be great if it did. It'd be great if this came in multiple shades too, but you could probably use something like that too. But this, it's nice to have a product specifically designed for your hair and your scalp. Um, I mean, you can see, I mean, it looks pretty white, but I would rather have that than have a sunburned scalp, you know? So, um, I like it. I'm gonna keep using it. I actually really do like that it, it gives like a lot of grit to your hair, even more so than a lot of dry shampoos, I think. So, I don't know if everyone would love that feeling, but I mean, you can see it's very stark and white. I kind of wish they would put a little bit of a tint in here just to make it a little less white. So yeah, I definitely don't think that's for everyone, and if it sounds like it may be too light for your hair, you might just want to stick to wearing a hat when you go outside, but I feel like this is a very inventive product, and I really would like to see more of these on the market, because I think this is a great idea. Okay, so next is the Super Goop Bright Eyed Mineral Eye Cream with SPF 40. So the reason I got this is because a lot of days I use a chemical sunscreen on my face, and chemical sunscreens burn my eyes really badly, but I still want to protect the skin all the way around my eyes because that's the area that tends to show the most aging first. It's the area that we often neglect when we're applying sunscreen to our face. A lot of people don't bring it all the way up to their eye. This is pretty pricey. It's $36. This is either $34 or $36 too. Supergoop is kind of pricey, but they have a lot of really like inventive sunscreen products that just really caught my eye so that's why I wanted to try them but unfortunately I don't think I can recommend this. It is zinc oxide only so mineral sunscreen actives are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide so you'll find some mineral sunscreens that have both titanium and zinc and some that are just zinc. The problem with zinc oxide only sunscreens is that they have a tendency to pill if they're not formulated well. So this has a light kind of peachy tint, which I actually really like. I feel like that gives a little bit of color correction to my under eyes. It brightens them a little bit. And there have been some times when I've really liked it, but other times, including today, it will actually start to pill up around my eyes. And I actually did show a close up. It didn't do this on it didn't do that on this side, but it did it on this side and you can see towards the edge of where I had it applied it's starting to like flake off and it makes it looks like my skin is really dry right there but it's not it's the sunscreen i have found that the best way to apply it is to just kind of pat it into your skin as opposed to rubbing it in just gently kind of pat it that will lessen the amount of pilling and also try not to layer this over too many other skincare products like don't be putting on a separate eye cream underneath this or like a serum try to keep the rest of your skincare very minimal and don't try to layer this over a lot of things but even still like that's what i did today i have this on my under eyes and nothing else and then of course i applied makeup over it which i do wear makeup most days and it still kind of lifted up a little bit, especially over here. So I just feel like if you're going to be spending $36 for something, you want it to work and look nice no matter what. And like I said, I've had some days where it looks great and I didn't really have any pilling, but then other days I do. So it's just kind of finicky to me and I'm going to keep using it. And I do like that kind of brightening effect that it gives my under eyes, especially on no makeup days, but it's just, I can't recommend it. And honestly, most mineral sunscreens are not going to burn your eyes most likely. It's really the chemical sunscreens that are. So if you have a, like a gentle mineral face sunscreen that you like, take a small amount of that and just tap it around your eyes. Most likely it's not gonna burn your eyes and it's way cheaper than like a dedicated SPF eye cream. Yeah, so I may look around for some other SPF eye creams that maybe aren't just zinc oxide, like maybe a titanium and zinc one would be better for me, but this just, I just can't recommend that. And finally, the Super Goop hand screen. So they always say that the hands, the face, and like your neck and chest are the first places to start showing signs of sun damage and aging. And so I really wanna start being better about wearing sunscreen on my hands. I mean, obviously you can use any sunscreen on your hands, but a lot of sunscreens don't really have a great texture for that like some of them are kind of thick or like have a white cast and they're sticky 
So I ended up getting the one fluid ounce size. They have a larger size that comes in a pump bottle, but I just wanted to try it. So this is a chemical sunscreen. It has avabenzone, octosalate, and octocrylin. Supergoop has eliminated oxybenzone and octanoxate from, I think, all of their sunscreen formulas now. The whole reef safe thing, I know a lot of people are really concerned about whether sunscreens are reef safe right now. From what I've read, it sounds like there needs to be a lot more research done on this. I'm not really going to speak a whole lot on that because I just want you guys to go do your own research and do what feels best for you. I know some people are completely avoiding chemical sunscreens. I'm kind of just trying my best to avoid the oxybenzone and octanoxate for now until more research comes out and I'm not going to tell people to not use chemical sunscreens when I don't know. I'm not educated enough on it. I think there just needs to be more research done in this area and I would hate to tell someone who maybe mineral sunscreens break them out or mineral sunscreens don't work well on their skin tone not to use a chemical sunscreen because that might turn them away from using sunscreen altogether and I would hate to do that. So that's where I stand on that. I do think it's an important thing to be aware of and yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that. But anyway, this is really nice. It comes out just like a lotion. It doesn't, obviously doesn't have a white cast because it's a chemical sunscreen. And um, I'll usually just kind of apply it like this because I really just mainly want it on the backs of my hands. And yeah, it sinks in quickly, it's lightweight, it's really nice. I think I would probably want to look for just a regular body sunscreen that I like on my hands and just use that because this is pricey. You don't need to go out and buy a separate sunscreen for every single part of your body. But if you know that having a dedicated hand cream with SPF is going to encourage you to actually wear sunscreen on your hands, it may not be the worst idea ever. But I would like to find maybe a cheaper alternative to this because I do really like it. It does have a light scent, kind of an herbal scent. I don't think you need to run out and buy this or really any of these super goop products, but they are kind of cool. Let's talk about some SPF lip balms. So I have two. I'm really trying to be much better about wearing SPF lip balm every day because I used to not, and I mean, that area is just as susceptible to sun damage as the rest of your face. So I have two here. This one is the, uh, Pacifica Sun and Lip Care SPF 30 Mineral Lip Balm, which this is actually the second tube of this that I've had. And then also the Desert Essence Lip Rescue Broad Spectrum SPF 30. So these are both mineral, which honestly I think mineral is probably the way to go with lip sunscreens because for me at least they're much less likely to irritate my lips, burn my lips, dry my lips out. So I've just had better luck with mineral lip sunscreens. But the Desert Essence one is just zinc oxide and it says it's water resistant 80 minutes. So of the two, the, the Desert Essence one is my least favorite. It has a very strong scent and taste that I don't love. Like it's, it says exotic coconut, but it really smells like tropical fruit kind of. And the, the, the scent slash taste also reminds me of something that I can't really put my finger on. It kind of reminds me of those hauls like, what are they called? The Halls Fruit Breezers Cough Drops. Do you guys remember those? They're like the milder cough drops that are more just like candy. Kind of reminds me of those. Did anyone else like have those growing up? <laughs> but anyway, strong taste and smell. I don't know if a lot of people would love that about it. And this also does give your lips a bit of a white cast, which I'll show in the close-ups. And it can kind of ball up a little bit. It's not the nicest texture, I guess. So I, yeah, this one I don't love, but it does the job and I'm gonna keep using it and probably use it up. Oh my gosh, this says it expires in May of 2020. I just bought this like a month ago off of Vitacost. Um, yikes. I really don't like to use expired SPF products. Anyway, so there's that and then this uh, Pacifica one, I do really like this. This I have on my lips right now, and this has a nude tint. I think they also make one with like a peach tint or something like that. And I think it's really nice that this has a tint because it means it's not going to give your lips a white cast. The active ingredients in here also are titanium and zinc oxide, so I think it's just a little bit easier to wear. The texture is a little bit nicer than a zinc oxide only one. And I have really liked this for a long time. It has a very mild, like sort of, sort of vanilla scent, really nothing major at all. And it doesn't taste weird either. It kind of has a slightly sweet taste, but I kind of like that. The only thing I'm worried about is that this was in their like last 
call or last chance section on the Pacifica website, which I'm worried means they're going to discontinue it. I don't know why they would do that because it's a great product, but yeah, so maybe get your hands on it before they do discontinue it. it. It is kind of a stiff, like dry formula, so you do kind of need to let it warm up on your lips before you glide it across, but I really like it. It doesn't dry my lips out, doesn't burn my lips. So I really like the Pacifica one. I would probably skip the Desert Essence one though. So speaking of Pacifica, I did pick up a couple other products from them recently. They were having like a sale on their website and so I picked up a few SPF things because they do have a lot of SPF products and there were some that I was just really curious about. So this one is their Set and Protect Matte Sheer Setting Mist. Uh, this has SPF 45 and I've been wanting to get something like this to use to sort of reapply throughout the day and I know they say that either like spray SPFs or powder SPFs really are not going to give you full coverage but if you're wearing makeup it's still important to reapply somehow and my humble opinion is that it's better to do something than to do nothing. So if you're gonna be wearing makeup, you put SPF on, like a regular cream SPF on at the beginning of the day, and then you put on makeup over that, let's say you're spending all day outside, it's gonna be way better to at least reapply something like this, or like a powder SPF, than to just not reapply at all. That's just my opinion. Anyway, so I've been wanting to try like a SPF spray facial mist like this. I actually, I do like this. The mister is really nice. It gives you like a nice, it feels like a nice even mist going on. And I always, I, I like douse my face in this because I want to get as much of that even SPF coverage as I possibly can. The active ingredients here are avabenzone, homosalate, octosalate, and octocrylin. And the only thing I will say about this is it has a strong, strong fragrance. Fragrance is one, two, three, four, the fifth ingredient, just parfum, and it says natural in parentheses, but it's strong. It smells, I guess it kind of smells to me like hairspray in a way, or it's just a very perfumey smell. So be aware of that. I don't know of any SPF setting sprays like this that don't contain fragrance, so to me, if it's between sun protection and fragrance, sun protection is going to come first because I think that's more important. Um, I do try to avoid fra fragrance in skincare as much as I can, but also the first inactive ingredient is uh, denatured alcohol. So I think that's probably what just allows it to kind of dry down easily on your skin. And it probably also helps to stabilize the sunscreen ingredients, but it's probably not something that you're gonna to wanna to be using every single day. And this is called a matte sheer setting mist. And it definitely is mattifying. Like I feel like my skin looks pretty matte, but then there was another time I used this that I felt like it made my skin look kind of dewy. So I don't know. I don't know what that was all about. Maybe it depends on like the makeup I have underneath or something, but anyway, but I would definitely recommend this as long as you're aware of that very strong fragrance. I think it's good to have a product like this just for those days where you really do need to reapply your sunscreen um, throughout the day. The last three products I have to talk about are body sunscreens, and this first one is also from Pacifica. It is their Mineral Shimmer Sunscreen uh, in the Rose Gold Glow version. This has SPF 30, it says it's water resistant 80 minutes. So this is like a tinted, shimmery body sunscreen. So it's a very specific product. I wouldn't, I don't, mm, I don't know man. This, it's got a tint to it that's a little dark on my skin tone, and so it can kind of go on a little streaky on me sometimes. You also have to be really careful, this does have a spray top. If you're spraying this directly on your skin, it is going to get on your clothes and stain them. <laughs> so I would recommend putting it into your hand first and then rubbing it in. That's been the way that I have had the most success with because other times it just, it gets in the air, it lands on like the wall, the furniture. It, so yeah, if you're gonna spray it on, do it outside and do it when you're wearing like dark colored clothes. <laughs> but I would say probably um, putting it in your hand first is the best way to do it. So I think this will be really pretty on like more medium to deep skin tones. On my skin tone, it is a little dark, but I think it's kind of pretty. I don't know, I, I like the way it looks. I might, if I was like at the beach and I was wearing like a dark colored swimsuit, not like a white swimsuit, cause I think it would stain. I might like the look of just that sort of like rose gold bronzy shimmer. So it's a fun product, but it's kind of um, tricky to use. So just 
kind of be prepared for that. And the active ingredient here is zinc oxide. I haven't had any issues with this pilling or anything, so it does have a rose scent to it, which I really like. I love the scent of rose. Finally, I have two more body sunscreens and then I'm done, finally. <laughs> this is gonna be a long video. The Alba Botanica Sensitive Mineral Sunscreen with SPF 30. This is fragrance free, which I really appreciate. Um, I think this is meant to be more of a body sunscreen, but you can use it on your face. I mean, you can use anything on your face if you want to, but I think the fact that it's fragrance free and like for sensitive skin makes it, you know, not a bad idea to put on your face. It is just titanium oxide and zinc oxide, so mineral sunscreen. I don't like this. <laughs> it is, and it even says on the back, very emollient and botanically moisturizing mineral sun protection. It is very emollient. It is, no doubt it is moisturizing, but it comes out like a, a very white lotion and as you start to blend it into your skin, it's white. Like it's like you're putting like white paste on your skin. Eventually that whiteness does blend in, so it's not gonna be giving you like a terrible white cast once it's blended in, but it still does have a little bit of a white cast and it just feels very heavy and sticky on your skin. I don't know about you, but I really don't like that feeling on my body. Um, it makes me not want to like sit on my furniture because I'm afraid I'm gonna get like greasy sunscreen on it. So I, yeah, this I'm not a fan of. I really appreciate that it's like such simple ingredients, very sensitive skin friendly, but it is just so, so thick, so thick. I, I just, I don't think very many people would enjoy wearing this. Then I have the Bare Republic Mineral Sunscreen Lotion SPF 50 in the Vanilla Cocoa Scent. So I like that this has SPF 50, especially if you're going to be spending your day outside. It's good to wear SPF 50 versus 30, I think, but this is also titanium and zinc. Honestly, I feel like these are very similar in formula, unfortunately. The Bare Republic one, I was going to say it's slightly more pleasant to wear, but honestly, it's just as thick and white. This may even have more of a white cast than the Alba Botanica one. It does have a scent, and I don't love the scent. It's kind of like a very sweet, sort of coconut scent, but sort of just like weirdly sweet and tropical. I don't know. I don't love it. And I've heard a lot of good things about Bare Republic sunscreens and I do like uh, their face SPF, which I'll be talking about in another video, but I really don't enjoy wearing this. I feel like it's very similar to the Alba Botanica one that I was just talking about. So for me, the search for a body sunscreen that I actually like wearing and that's like lightweight, non-greasy, like sinks into my skin nicely, the hunt continues for that, so if you have any suggestions, let me know. I have a feeling I would probably enjoy a chemical sunscreen more. Those do tend to be a little bit more cosmetically elegant, as they say. So yeah, the search continues. I know Bear Republic also makes like a, what they call like a gel lotion, which may be a little bit nicer to wear, so I might look into that one. I definitely prefer some sort of like lotion or cream as opposed to a spray SPF, just because I feel like you get better coverage and better protection with those, but let me know if you have any suggestions because I I need a body sunscreen that I actually like to wear. Because the thing is, if you can find a sunscreen that you like wearing, not just can tolerate, but that you actually enjoy wearing, you're so much more likely to wear it every single day. And I think that is so important. So that was my big roundup of SPF reviews I wanted to share with you. Basically every kind of SPF other than face SPF, which is coming soon, so stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed if you want to see that video. I'm really excited about it. Um, I love I love testing out sunscreen, especially face sunscreen, but other kinds of sunscreen too. So if there's any other preferably kind of low-cost, affordable sunscreens that you want me to test out for you, let me know. Definitely more misses than hits in this video, unfortunately, but hopefully in my next one I can recommend some body sunscreens that I think you would like because unfortunately these I don't know that I recommend. I mean, yeah, they're all kind of just not great. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do let me know if you have any other recommendations. And um, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I'd love to see you again soon. I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, sometimes a bonus video on Sunday, um, all kinds of videos about cruelty-free beauty. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up so that I know you liked it. And hopefully I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.